Welcome to King David Ministries with Reverend Eddie Royal, Sr. Here is Reverend Royal. Well, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord he has made. I will and you should rejoice and be glad. And welcome again to another edition of King David Ministries with your host, Pastor Eddie L. Royal. Royal, Sr. And I am the pastor of King David Ministry and the founder of King David Ministry. So we thank and praise God for you. And uh, we're going to continue on. You know, when in blacks and government, there is a motivational uh, speaker that we always used to come, especially during the conferences. And I went to them for years. Uh, my name was Jewel Diamond Taylor. And one of the things that she would say would keep keep the main thing the main thing again keep the main thing the main thing so what I want you to do is keep the main thing the main thing I thought about that when I was at the office the other day and uh, I was talking to somebody and I was, he had written down something, and they said, that'll preach. Now, I've been hearing that for years, uh, that, that, that for years, that'll preach. Well, okay, and, and what matter, and I thought about it after the thing that what I know now. What do you mean, what, the meaning of that'll preach? In other words, it'll probably get the people's attention. It'll probably be where maybe they can relate to it. Maybe they can get happy about it. Uh, uh, something of that nature. But that'll preach. And then I thought about it. We, we, we Especially for us that are ministers and, and pastors and leaders. Then we try to come up with subjects that would, as the person say, that'll preach. In other words, where the people get their people's attention. I remember what Sister Chandler said, and I've, I've heard it said many, many times. Oh, the pastor sure did preach today. Oh, he preached, or she preached. Well, what did they preach about? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. However, but what they did is make you feel good. That's okay. But after knowledge and information has gone forth, you know, because the person that, and I've said it, well, I, I, hey, they jumped over benches, they, they got a good hoop. Mm -hmm. I, I, I heard, and oh, God, and I, I, okay, that's what I came up in. However, prior to you doing it, and they still do, I still do, but now I know. What about the information? Because Matthew, I'm not Matthew, Hebrews plainly tells us, look at chapter 4. And again, I would admonish you and any preacher that you should know the word of God for yourself. Just in case. That goes for me or any preacher that they interpret it and do it just right. What I mean by just right, we all make mistakes. But what I'm saying is, is that, and and uh, Timothy Chandler said that, which is Sister Chandler's father, they said, make sure that that's what that preacher is preaching, because it may not be what's supposed to be that's in that book. It might be their agenda. And the agenda would say that it is possibly to get you to feel good and uh, in its religiosity, and then you get, they get a good offering. I, I, I don't, there's nothing wrong with it. I, but the issue is I'm, I'm learning. My people are destroyed for, glory to God, a lack of knowledge. Okay? So, when you said that'll preach, and I've been around a lot of pastors and, and, and preachers that say, yeah, that'll preach, that'll preach. 
what do you what do you mean by that? It, are, are you thinking about the people that's entrusted to you? And that's the book too. And again, you need to check me, read it for yourself. That'll preach. However, what I am dealing with and going to be dealing with is that Jesus only preached one thing. One. Now we have different facets of what comes to the mind and these things. But but within that realm, one thing and one thing only did Jesus preach. Now, he is the head of the church. Period. Amen. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Can't. But he said, my. He didn't say Eddie Royal. Okay? I, I won't build. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not building Eddie Royal's church. Okay? It's my church. Now, I can't. And I, 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 I've told people that even I. I just, you know, the streets are talking about saving me. I had one guy that let's say that to me. And I was at the barber shop and he, years ago, and he was drunk. But everybody knew I was a minister. And the barber's there. And my main barber, which is um, uh, uh, Durian, amen. And he, and he, we were all in there. And, oh, well, you can save me. I said, my brother, I can't save me. You a preacher, ain't you? Yeah. You a pastor? Yeah. But I can't save me. What I can do is point you in the right direction. But I can't save me. Okay? There's only one that can save me. That's what I'm talking about. So what a preach. And you know what? His message was not the cross, per se. Was not prosperity, per se was not even healing per se. Only one thing. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. That's all. One thing. So you think about that or preach. What do you mean that or preach? When we should be focused on one thing. And that's what the master did. And if you Step into a call, rather, let me back up. If you are called into the realm of being, being ministers of the gospel, then you are under orders and mandate of the head of the church that has called you, not you decided, okay, in, to, to preach what he told you to. And any pastor should be in line and in tune and in ear with God. Amen. Because the kingdom is within you, but the Holy Ghost is here. Sure, it's quiet. See, he said, if I do not go, uh, the Holy Ghost can't come. So they can't be at the same time. Sure, it's quiet. I've been learning all this stuff. Okay, God's in heaven. He never was here. He ain't here now. You've been trying to get him to, to, to come down, and, and that ain't working. Amen. He ain't, he ain't coming here. He's a king there. And here on earth is where we're supposed to be as kings and dominated, but we've been messed, we messed up. Even when Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. And to bring back one thing, a kingdom. Now, we, we, we've gone through everything else. But what was that one thing? What was the one mission? And I just got a couple of scriptures. To prove. Now, what you got to do, or should do rather, is evaluate that. Whether you be a layman, or whether you be a, a, a pastor, Apostle, prophet, that evangelist, pastor, and teacher, it, it evaluated it and didn't find out. Instead of what a preach, what did the master say? Now, 
If you say I've been pastoring for 50 years, doesn't matter. And I and I'm I, and I've been hearing on the internet that you know the kingdom has been coming out. A couple of people have been have been talking about the kingdom. But many I just just I just know, especially for me, you know what I mean. Well, who do you think you are? You know what I mean. Well, I ain't new to this. I'm true to this. I've been around most in, in my realm. I've been around longer than most ministers have. That it, that's in my been around in my circles. I was in ministry before they were. But I respected that when they got called and they went into pastors, I respected that. A lot of them didn't respect me just because I was an organist. But I was still a preacher. I was a preacher. Once I got called a preacher, I was a preacher. And, the, and, 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 and being an organist was second. However, I respected that. Okay? But it got to the point. And, so we, and then as we go forth, we are family. And we shouldn't try to hold each other back or be... And, and Sister Chandler preached on that about being jealousy and envy. They call twins. I just swear I'm not going. I'm trying to get there. They call twins. This should not. You talking about not being na named among us, like sin? That's just disconnect, and disobedience to God. That's it. Rebellion. That's actually what it means. Okay. But we. But 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 jealousy and envy. Trying to put somebody stay, keep them in the same place. You stay, as she said, right where you are. We, as we go forth, don't do that. There are going to be a lot of ministers that are going to start coming, come, uh, coming out. Respect that. If they say they they're called to preach, then if if they're not, then that's not your call. Because only God, the Lord Jesus, can call somebody to preach. And you should know when. He said, uh, amen. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me. He has anointed me to what? Preach the gospel. God called him. And then he called his disciples. Okay. And he sent them out. So it, the only way you can get called to preach is it's personal. Now if you decided to. And I, I, I heard one incident where, uh, matter of fact, uh, the, the preacher went to a mega church, and and because he was going to preach there, but God spoke to him and said, I didn't, it, was, it was a man and wife, uh, a pastor, and he said, I didn't call neither one of them. He didn't call them. Okay? So, that's it. So, since we're under, if you were called into that, then what is it? And then if you get called to a pastorate and some, he said, you know, you started off well, but what hindered you? Because the folks need to have information. And that's, as a teacher, is what you're supposed to do. Because that church is the embassy of heaven. Oh, God. Psalm 103, 103, starting at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Father, we thank you for the word, the anointing that is on the word, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, with that said, for us that are ministers and pastors and preachers, and don't, as I said before, this is the word. Verify me. Let's, let's go. Okay, first of all, what did John, I mean, David preached the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, um, uh, Daniel preached it. There are many others that preached it. Okay. However, what is the main thing? The main thing. Not what's going to preach. Not what he's thinking about it. I've done it. What's going to make him jump over benches? Okay, that's fine. And folks can get emotional. But in the meantime, give them something that they walk out that church with. Because the evaluation will be, I don't care if you've been there for 50 years. Did it benefit? Because the word, said, the word says in Hebrews chapter 4, the word preach did not profit them not being mixed with faith and then that hurt it. Did it profit? I didn't say if it profited or not. I don't know. But it should you should evaluate. Did it profit me? In other words, did it get? Because it has to get in you. I didn't know that. You know, 
that the word talked about it, it's in here and everything else and, and the word looking in in a mirror and then walk away and forget what you get what you heard you know and then again as this channel is brought out in one uh, say say i hear you people talking down oh but i ain't really listening so i hear you mm, yeah and on the third day uh-huh before the break of day maybe uh -huh. okay fine However, before that, what did you come up with that's going to impact me to deliver a better life when I leave? Because if I'm attacked, and I will, then the pastor's not going to be nowhere around. I won't be nowhere around. They won't be. You're going to have to deal with that yourself. You can call a pastor and pray. They can pray for you, but you got to deal with that. Now, what is the mission? That Jesus preached. We are officers of the church house. The church rather. And it's the embassy of the unseen kingdom. That is on the same kingdom of earth. And it is an embassy. Because the word of God says. That we are ambassadors. And that church building. Amen. That sits where you ever you go worship. That is if you belong to you. Is an embassy of the kingdom of God on earth. Now on the same realm. And that don't mean going in there jumping over bitches all, all the time. And then getting a good hoop on and getting a Bible study and and, and, and morning worship and, 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 and Sunday school. That's it. That is not the purpose. But we've gotten that for it, Christianity or going, it's become a religion. Just something, it's just what we're supposed to do. Now we get saved and that's it. No, it's more to it than that. More to it. Even tithes and offerings. I got I saw some information about that. That's the old testament I knew. I didn't say don't pay your tithes. But it's not mandated. Even and I read it in I think it was Hebrew. Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils to Melchizedek, but it wasn't a tithe. I heard it say your tithes isn't even in the New Testament. It wasn't a tithe. It's the tenth of the spoils. It was the tenth. I didn't say don't pay your tithes. I'm saying is it's not mandated. Not there. Oh, it's quiet. Okay. Now, Matthew, first of all, just, uh, I, I got to listen 15 minutes. Listen. John the Baptist was the only one it shook hands with Jesus and he still didn't get in the kingdom. He baptized him. Because for 2,000 years they would say, oh, he's coming. He's a coming. And that word even says that in Luke chapter, uh, I think, 14, verse 14. It says, the gospel, the, the law and the prophets were until John. John who? John the Baptist. But since that time. The kingdom of heaven has been preached. The law being Moses. The prophet being Elijah. And that's who appeared to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Which he said, I'm here now. Good job, boys. Now, since that time. Read it for yourself. Okay. Since that time, the kingdom of heaven has been preached. Now, what are we going to do about it? Instead of what's going to preach. Woo-wee! I, I mean, being in a situation like that, me, from what I've read and what I, uh, I've seen, I'd kind of be shaking in my boots. Well, God is not going to do nothing. That's what, you know, they say, well, Susanna said that. Well, you think God's in your back pocket and he ain't forgot. No. Because and if you go on a job, but that mandate is to do what them what that job specifies you to do. Hmm. Now, and if you don't, you know what's gonna happen. Okay. Now that you straighten up. Mhm. Mm now, so we are officers of the court as the attorney is officer of the court, and we are officers of the church, of the kingdom of God. I put it like that even better. 
Now, what is the man? What did Jesus say? Now, John the Baptist said in Matthew chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. He says, and then we're going to go to the words. I, I want you to see me read it out of the Bible. Write it down and then check me. Okay? It says in Matthew chapter 2, 3, and, and, and says, and saying, this is John the Baptist, saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what he was preaching. That's all he was preaching. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But, as I said, up until John the Baptist, but here comes Jesus. Now he's in the flesh. God, you trying, we're trying to get God up there, and God came to us in a body. That's the law. He had to get a body. This has to be preached because, like I said before, you've been there 50 years, and them young kids, it, it, you ain't, you're not addressing them. And if you are, if the shoe don't fit, don't, then don't wear it. But if it hasn't fit, then you need to do it instead of what's going to preach. That's the topic today. What's going to preach? What do you mean, what's going to preach? What's going to better fit me since I'm there? And it be proven. I can't see for the life of me that we can be in these positions for years and years and years and get financially wealthy. That's fine as long as it's on your dime. Amen. Not the churches. Sure is quiet. Because you know, if you, you, you if you if you're doing your pastoral day and if you if you if you're good at it and you pray out six months, I know how it works. Then if you're real smart like you say you are. I mean, your first pastoral day could net you 10000 or more. If you plan it out right, then you take half of that or whatever you're going to do, pay, get out of debt, pay your bills if you're in full-time ministry, and then invest. And then if you've been there 30, 40 years, you should be set. Amen. And with a good salary. Okay? But why would I do that? And I got folks still on riding Uber. As in my congregation, still sick, still poor, still nervous in the service, still all that. Something not right. Now, he said, we, like back to John the Baptist. Now, so he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 14, 4 rather, and 12. I believe that's it. Matthew chapter 4. Oh, I'm running out of time. But we get this from the word. And 12. Okay, Matthew chapter 4. Yeah. Matthew chapter 4 and 17. I'm sorry. 17. That's, I believe that's what it is. And, and it says here, that's what it was, verse 17, verse 17. And it says, and, G, and, and from that time, Jesus began to preach. This is from the word right here. Read it for yourself. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say repent that means to change your mind doesn't mean i'm sorry a lot of times that don't mean nothing no way you know what i mean you know i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i don't mean that okay so it says repent in other words to change your mind that's what it means okay it means to change you got to get a kingdom mentality but we'll get that another time okay for the kingdom of heaven if the king james version and this is the new king james version he says is at hand, but as just said, has arrived. That was his purpose. He said, and that was his first sermon. From that time forward, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven has arrived. Now, you got that? Write it down. Let's go to Luke 4 and 43. <clears throat> Luke chapter 4 yeah. and 
chapter Luke chapter 4 and verse 43 and when it, it was day he departed and when it let's start at 42 and when it was day he departed and went into a, a desert place a deserted place and the crowd sought him and came to him and tried to keep him from from leaving them voice verse 43 and he said to them i must preach to proclaim the kingdom of god to the other cities hold on to your seats listen also because for this purpose i have been what sent he didn't come on his own he was sent oh god his daddy i must preach the kingdom of god to the other cities also because for this purpose i have been sent luke 12 32 i'm out of time i get there 12 32 uh, what does it say here? Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, Matthew chapter 24, and we'll go. Let's go here. Matthew chapter 24. Oh, boy. Matthew 24, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, and the, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached, watch this, in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end shall come. You know when? Don't say we don't know. We don't know. You do know. You just don't know the day. And the only way he's coming back is when the gospel is preached. And it has to be preached by us. And the devil knows that. That's why he, if he ain't preaching it, then he can stay back. Because he knows he's doomed. But if he can keep him back, he's never come back if, you don't, if we don't start doing something. Okay? I read you these scriptures. Now, what you going to do about it? Well, I know what I'm going to do about it. But what are you going to do about it? Okay? He said, as you go preach, saying the kingdom. Now, well, I've been doing this for 50. I don't care. You do it. You change it up. That's what you do. That's what they need to know. Okay? Nothing wrong with, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're financially and you're a good orator, you're a good pastor. That's excellent. Amen. But that word said you preach the kingdom. Kingdom. That's it. That's all. Okay? And they need to know it. And that kid needs to know it. Okay? The kids need to know how this thing functions. Okay? They need to know it because they, they, if they, they're they supposed to be kings. And, they don't really going to end up drinking lean. They're going to end up smoking. But they ain't going to do that much. Yes, they are. They probably might be still. They might be doing it now. They just don't want to tell you. Okay? So, But you need to at least put it out there. You just can't put it up with, with some kind of old Mary, don't you weep sermon. Amen. And that's it. And, and, and that's it. And that kid back there. 10, 12, 11, 13 years old, 14 years old. You don't know what they get in, in, in school because they got thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. Amen. That's how the devil works. You got to let them know that. I'm out of time. Listen, tomorrow, 5985 Century Boulevard at the Sonesta Hotel, t hotel we'll be on the second floor this time in the Temecula room. I'll be ministering to so the channel re ministry. We've been having the time. In the she, she is back from Mississippi. Amen. After the funeralization of her older sister amen but amen we'll be there on this coming sunday tomorrow matter of fact 5985 since you built in the temecula at in the temecula room at the sonesta hotel the live stream will start at three o'clock all right we love you god bless you take what i said though and what you do write it down and check me or anybody that's what you do work out your own soul salvation with fear and truth okay we love you we'll see you on tomorrow Bye bye You have been listening to King David Ministries with Reverend Eddie Royal Sr. The ministry can be heard every Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time 
on ktymgospel.net.